My favorite part of being an author, I think, is interacting with you know, you guys, people like you, um, it's fun. You know, I sit in my office and I write books and I, I definitely enjoy that. I can wake up and make something up and, you know, get paid for it. Uh, that's always awesome. And I love having the freedom of schedule of not having to go to a nine to five job. Like I can make my own hours, which is really nice. Um, but I think my favorite part is really interacting with readers. And so I'll go to do school visits in person a lot and, you know, talk to the kids. Uh, kids who read the book and I, I like that you know I like hearing what people you know responded to from my work because otherwise I don't have any co-workers I kind of sit by myself in a vacuum my dog is my co-worker I guess <laughs> uh, and so you know it's it's more fun to go out or go online and talk to people online too if I can't you know actually be there in person whether doing a Skype visit or just going on you know like a on a social media site or whatever so it, it's definitely fun to interact um, I love that you know people do do things in the world so I create this world and then suddenly there's you know fan fiction or pictures or videos or you know, other people role playing the characters, and that's really fun to see that a world I created got expanded by other people. So I like fandom, I guess. Um, so, how do your readers influence um, what you like? Like with sequels and stuff, do your readers influence you? Do my readers influence me? Um, you know, I, I don't want to say that they they certainly do I mean of course they're going to but there's so many it's hard to say you can't cater to one person's opinion so someone might not like how I ended the book well I can't say well I should have done it differently because this person didn't like it because this person might have loved it uh, some people you know like a lot of characters some people don't um, some people are you know Connor fans some people are Caleb fans or like in Shattered, I know you guys have started reading Shattered. Some people love Scarlet, and some people are like, "Why is Scarlet in this book? I don't like Scarlet." And I'm like, "Well, you know, stay tuned." <laughs> but um, I think that you know, I can't say, "Oh, well, then I shouldn't have put in Scarlet because there's some people who aren't Team Scarlet." And it's like, no, Scarlet had to be in the story because that's the story I had in my head. She was an important part of it, and um, so I can't let it influence me. It's kind of funny because when. Facebook was really big with uh, teens. There was a lot of role playing on it, and so when I did my vampire series, uh, there was a huge role playing group, and so they would all talk to me as my own character. So if I was having a bad day and I put it on Facebook, they'd be like, "Oh, cheer up, Mary!" And I'd be like, "Oh, thank you, imaginary character that I made up in my head." Now talking to me, on <laughs> that's odd. Um, so, but you know, they would make up their own stories and do role playing where they go into like a room on Facebook and just you know do a whole scene and uh, it would be tempting to read all of that and, and but at the same time I didn't want them to their their versions of my characters to influence you know the real characters that are in the books that had to stay separate who don't like to read um, I mean I think that you know it's not about necessarily reading books it's about reading stories and you can read stories in a lot of different ways whether it is manga or video games. Um, I think there's some awesome stories being told in video games, and that's another way to experience story if you can't, you know, get into a full book. Um, I think that sometimes schools put so much emphasis because of testing and all that on serious, you know, literary books, and I don't know if that means necessarily they're any better than the books that are being published today. And if they're if they're turning kids away from reading, then it sh they shouldn't be pushed to the extent that someone's not going to read at all because they didn't want to read Dickens. I mean, like Charles Dickens is a serious book today but back when he was publishing it was like a, a newspaper serial where he got paid by the word and he would write these you know adventures like serialized novels and so you know who's to say that was better than what's going on today sure he was a very talented writer but if, if that is too dense for someone and they don't want to read that and it turns them off from writing forever because they feel like that's what they should aspire to I, I feel bad you know because I think there's so many books that are so much more accessible to um you know, readers that may not, may be reluctant. Um, my books have gotten a couple times on the library list for uh, quick picks for reluctant readers, and I always felt like that was the best award I could get, is saying that someone, you know, I, someone who didn't normally pick up a book would pick up my book and, and, and enjoy it, even though they don't identify themselves as a reader. So I think that's really great, and I hope to do more of that. Mary?